This video very well could be the most important news you will hear about this metal for this year. I'll explain why you should be happy about that as we explore. Gold, we have seen it move uh, to the downside as of late. And that may not be good news for some of you, especially if you've been holding gold or feel like you're getting very close to the end of your stacking journey of gold. But nonetheless, these are the times that we live in. A little bit lower gold prices. We've been here before. Gold usually does come back around. And in fact, it doesn't move as wildly as silver does which is why many of us, especially as you kind of mature in your stacking journey, uh, many tend to move towards gold uh, more so than silver. And that's not to say that still silver stackers aren't mature. I'm just saying that usually when you have a whole lot, literally physically of a whole lot of, of the other metal, uh, it makes sense to sort of consolidate. And that's what gold does. And you become a little bit more conservative and you find more conservative assets to, to get into. And gold is certainly one of those uh, metals. But we know we understand its beauty as well too. But nonetheless, there's two sayings that you hear often in the community, certainly from me as well. Number one, be your own bank, be your own central bank rather. Be your own central bank by holding gold because that's what they do. And, uh, and then the other saying is, do what the central banks do. And don't do what they say, but do what they do. And indeed, most of them are indeed continuing to accumulate more gold. Now, this story I'm going to be reporting from is really uh, not an unusual story. It's the timing of it that I think uh, really is, it puts it into perspective. Uh, central bank demand is increasing, and it is back on track to what we had seen last year and the beginning part of this year. And why is this important news? Why is it the most important news for this year? Well, I'll tell you why as we get into the story. Central banks reportedly have added 77 tons of gold to the global reserves in, in, in August. Central banks collectively increased their gold reserves in August for the third consecutive month. They added based off of the reporting from data uh, from the World Gold Council, about 77 tons uh, to global official reserves during the month, a 38% uptick from July's buying. Over the last three months, their combined net buying has totaled 219 tons, comfortably outweighing the combined net sales that we saw from April and May, and that was 96 tons. Uh, you may remember that I reported on that during during this particular time. And who was doing a lot of the selling? Well, Turkey kind of led the road there. Why did they do it? Uh, they did it to help their citizens. And so in a sense, it really was uh, not much of a sale because it went right to their fellow countrymen. That's actually a very good thing. You'll never see that here. You know, we've not sold any gold or added not a single ounce, at least according to official records here in the United States. We have over 8,100 tons of the metal if you believe the reports, that is. And by the way, if you believe these reports, these are the official holdings, according to this piece here. They say that because we really don't know what how much gold China is getting. More likely, they're probably quietly amassing a lot more gold so they can be the top gold holder uh, in the world. Because right now, we here in the United States are by far and above the largest holder of gold, at least according to official records. Nonetheless, you know, that makes you wonder if our records are right or if we are secretly accumulating any more gold here and keeping it under wraps. You never know. I don't know. But anyways, the recent uh, buying suggests that we have now firmly moved past the selling we saw in April and May, which was primarily driven by heavy non-strategic selling from Turkey. Actually, I would say that was very strategic as given their, their citizens an opportunity to prevent uh, the fur a worsening of the currency crisis that is going on there, which Turkey admittedly has a revolving door of currency crises there. Um, and they are confident that the long-term trend for healthy central bank demand remains in place now. In fact, yes, and it is indeed a 
pretty big uptick that we've been seeing if you look at a chart over the past two years here or a year and a half. Buying, however, continues to be sizable but limited to a small number of banks. The People's Bank of China once again led the pack, adding a further 29 tons during the month. This brings its year-to-date purchases to 155 tons and its total buying since last November, which it began regularly reporting purchases to 217 tons. So as of what they report, as a result, gold holdings climbed to 2,165 tons at the end of August, accounting for just over 4% of the total reserves. China is one of those um, that certainly is a, an enigma, and uh, it's a question as to what kind of gold they're adding and if, if they are doing some of it in secret, or maybe they're over-exaggerating their gold reserve holdings to give the impression of having more than they have in order to uh, further uh, you know, claim dominance as, as, as the second largest economic superpower. And we really don't know. There's a lot of unanswered questions here. And do not discount the slight possibility, albeit slight, that there may be a shadow uh, institution in here in the United States that's secretly accumulating gold uh, to its reserves without telling anybody and storing it in, in a secret location that nobody knows. And they would do that so as to not draw attention to the yellow metal. Uh, but nonetheless, that's just a theory I'm putting out there. I think I'm the only one that has ever thrown that theory out there. Uh, you know, theories are something that you can kind of just play around with and and uh, you know, see what what could happen, what you could theorize. But one thing, if you know for sure, you can drink gold, and just such as the case with this alcoholic beverage called Goldschlager, um, that has little gold flakes. You can actually ingest those. Yes, indeed. By the way, I am a paid sponsor of Goldschlager. Uh, they paid me to put this bottle here. I'm kidding. They didn't pay me. Uh, that's just I just had this thing laying around. I thought I'd show it. Uh, because, yes, you can ingest gold, and I've actually done videos showing how gold can be used to decorate food, and it can be ingested. Yes, indeed, it's inert. It does not react to the body or anything else for that matter, including alcohol, even a high concentration of alcohol. Now, there it is, pretty wild. So, now, what other country? This is a surprise, to, only to some extent. If you've been paying attention to this channel for a long time, you know that there's another country... Uh, that has been racing towards gold, and that is the National Bank of Poland. They remained a significant buyer during the month. Uh, the National Bank of Poland bought a further 18 tons, bring it to, bringing its year-to-date net buying to 88 tons, and a step closer to its previously stated 100 tons buying target. Its gold reserves now amount to 314 tons, which is 11% of their total reserves. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Turkey added 15 tons to its gold reserves in August as it continues to rebuild its reserves following the sales mentioned above that went to the people of Turkey. Now, the Central Bank of Uzbekistan added 9 tons. The Reserve Bank of India added 2 tons. The Czech National Bank bought 2. Singapore and the National Bank of K the Kizir Republic bought 1 ton. Where... The other buyers of the month, the Central Bank of Russia also reported a three-ton increase in its gold reserves in August, taking its gold reserves back to where they started the year at 2,333 tons. So Russia apparently is doing okay as they're able to add more gold to their reserves. While reported sales are virtually non-existent for the month, Bloomberg has reported claims that the Central Bank of Bolivia had monetized 17 tons of its gold reserves between May and, on, uh, and August. This follows new legislation in May enabling the central bank to utilize its gold reserves. If confirmed, this would represent a 40% decline in its gold reserves. Uh, until confirmed, however, there is ambiguity on the use of monetize, as this could mean several things, including, for example, outright sales or swap agreements. Currently, data on gold reserves at the Central Bank of Bolivia is not available after April, so there is uh, a need to uh, kind of wait for more confirmation on that. But monetization of gold, I tell you what, since the Bank of International Settlements labeled gold as a tier one asset, essentially that puts it on par and equal to the dollar and other currencies out there for being complete and wholly fungible for swaps and the like. 
but of course, we know that the gold's price may be down for now, but its value remains intact. And this is why this is so important, because central banks see the importance of gold, and they see the importance of adding gold when the price is low. And even though in August we've seen that incline, uh, likely this is going to continue. Um, central bank buying remains healthy. Even accounting for the net sales that we saw earlier in the year, the pace of buying so far suggests that we are on course for yet another strong annual total. And that is something that is remarkable to think about, especially if they're taking advantage of the dips like you and I are. And so this is a classic case of do what they are doing. And I think it's a, a classic example that we can take for ourselves personally to be our own central bank and to accumulate gold on the dips. And uh, I tried to do a little bit of that when I saw a uh, what I thought was a semi-substantial dip. I'm, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But uh, you know, and I bought this piece, but nonetheless, uh, there remains other opportunities when the powder becomes available again, and uh, the budget allows, and that's just it. Buying gold is revolves or requires a bit more strategy in terms of uh, how you uh, uh, allocate funds to make a purchase. But uh, continuing to add to the stack is something that is uh, advisable and admirable, I think, for most of us out there as we uh, begin to kind of uh, try to make sense of the madness that is going on around us. There's still a lot of things economically that uh, uh, are lending to a situation where we could see an economic downturn um, at any moment, really. Uh, I, I don't say that lightly. You know, the, look at the bond yields. They're, they're up as high as they were in 2007. Is that a sign? There's other things. The, the employment mix, the numbers are kind of mixed. There's other metrics in the economy. Incredible amount of debt being added as we speak. And uh, it's just, um, there's a lot going on. Geopolitics and the like, uh, and any number of things, but especially and first and foremost, is certainly the commercial real estate market. That very well could be the trigger that leads us down to a fairly severe recession, especially when we have an unresolved uh, inflation crisis here. And it's not a massive crisis, but it's enough of a problem that we're seeing wages not being able to keep up. And that, uh, in turn, with uh, increasing inflation over the past uh, couple of uh, months here, in spite of high rates and threat of raising rates even higher. Uh, that all leads to the credence of a, of a potential semi-stagflation uh, situation that could come our way. So nonetheless, this is why this video is probably the most important news you'll hear about gold this year. What the central banks are doing, and I'm doing what the central banks are doing, are you. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.